please welcome the next team to the stage uh, uh, to present their paper titled Finding the Best Product for Your Consumer Segment. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to know, do you know that, you know, uh, three, out of, uh, three out of four women in India today is facing skin issues. And these issues are such where she needs targeted solutions. So what she is doing is she is uh, seeking to simplify her routine, but she needs holistic wellness and not just cosmetic beauty. Now, for this, she needs to be aware about a lot of science-based active ingredients. And these, these ingredients like niacinamide or uh, retinol or cortisol or salicylic, these, these ingredients, what kind of benefits these ingredients are going to give, she's focusing behind that and she follows a lot of dermats, a lot of skin influencers to get a lot of understanding about this and how it is going to help her, how it is going to help target her skin issues specifically. She's ready to try a lot of different formats, a lot of uh, different types of uh, sprays and uh, powders and mists and serums, all things, whatever is going to help her address her skin needs, right? Where will she get this access? She'll get it from uh, online, from offline, and the best part is that her online and offline uh, uh, experiences are so well uh, synergized that it, she gets a very seamless experience. And lastly, she is looking at a lot of tech and AI-powered uh, solutions like virtual try-ons or uh, modiface or digital consultations, which will help her get the right solutions. Now, in L'Oreal, uh, we believe uh, that innovation is the key to uh, being a pioneer and being a leader. And L'Oreal invests a lot in uh, uh, innovation. Let's have a look at what uh, the India MD, Mr. Asim Kaushik, has to say about it. From a point of DNA of L'Oreal, uh, innovations uh, form a very, very important part of our strategy uh, when we're looking at growing. Sure. So, uh, and how do you then make sure that there is a consistent flow of innovations in new products which you're launching in a particular market is, is through uh, a huge amount of investment which the group does on research and innovation. Right. So on a worldwide level, L'Oreal actually reinvests back 1% of its top line or turnover back into R&D. There is a lot of uh, basis of what the products, the molecules, the efficacy, uh, etc., cetera, is, is, is taken care of in terms of being ahead of curve uh, for bringing the best products and formulations for uh, the consumers. Like I said, innovation is the spine for L'Oreal, yeah, right? And for that, keeping that in mind, we are here to showcase a project which we started to create facial cleansers, which will be uniquely designed for Indian skin women. Uh, they, it will give a sensorial profile which is crafted for you, and it will demonstrate uh, advantages or strengths which above the uh, over and above what the current uh, market is offering to you. In our endeavor to identify the best formulations for the Indian skin, L'Oreal and Ipsos leverage a methodology that elevates product evaluation beyond the conventional method. So while indeed a baseline of traditional product test uh, was the core of our project, we added sensory spatial segmentation, and this was the hero of our research because it links the sensorial profile of products with consumer liking data to identify distinct consumer segments. And we did not just stop here. We powered both these stages with AI. AI powered verbatim analytics to capture consumer opinions in their most authentic form, and gen AI powered personas to mirror real life conversations. So we were cognizant that the category of facial cleansers couldn't be studied based on just one single usage. So we measured the progression of consumers' moments of truth from the short term till the extended term. And while short term indicated first level impressions and sensory appeal, the extended usage provided a holistic overview of the product satisfaction and efficacy. And like we said before, we supercharged our research with AI. How? We captured authentic and spontaneous consumer feedback. So we captured not just their words, but also the nuances of their tone, their emotions, and their expressions. 
Our AI-powered algorithms then analyzed and categorized these responses into distinctive themes. And we combined this rich data and layered it onto our quantitative results. And so we were able to get a very nuanced mapping of consumer preferences as well as reactions. Thanks, thanks Minshu. The next step ahead for us was sensory spatial segmentation. Now here we use the positional information of the products on a multi-dimensional sensory space and link it with the consumer liking data. So the combination of consumer liking data and the sensorial properties of the product helps us to allocate respondents with, con with similar liking patterns into distinct segments. Now in this research, we tested about nine to 10 products, including competition products, right? And like you see, we had three distinct segments, very well defined, for example, on texture. Segment one preferred gel texture, segment two preferred creamy texture. So the power of this approach is that we are able to identify the true strengths of the product, especially the sensorials, which consumers would not otherwise articulate. Now in today's time, we all know that the best results are achieved through a partnership of human and artificial intelligence. So what we did was we powered our segments, we brought them to life using AI. Great. So like you saw, we had three segments or three personas powered by AI. And um, let's hear a, a brief description on who our personas are. Persona one, may you just go back to the last slide? Sorry. Persona one, Ankita, she is a Gen Z who struggles with her sensitive and oily skin. Persona two, Priya, she is a millennial who craves to bring back her lost glow while still seeking products which are gentle on her skin. Persona three, Nivedita, she is a Gen X who is strictly looking for dermat approved formula or a clinically proven formula to solve for her fine lines, dark spots and pigmentation issues. Now the product stakeholders of Persona Bot, which is a breakthrough AI tool at Ipsos, are able to converse with these personas as if they are real people. And the conversations can happen individually or in a group, just like you would do in any online forum, right? These personas, AI-driven personas, are specially designed to handle unlimited questions, including life stage, lifestyle, shopping preferences, behaviors, and much more. Let's move to the next slide, please. Let me now showcase an example of a conversation that we had with these AI personas. So we asked the same question to all three of them uh, for the sake of simplicity. What is the one thing that you look in your facial cleanser? The first persona, she said that she prefers products with mild fragrance, natural fragrance, and with high foaming properties. Specifically, the gel-based formulations which were able to avoid irritation to her skin. Our second persona, she preferred fragrance-free products as they delivered on her expectation of gentleness. As fragrance-free was a very strong cue for no chemicals, no sulfates, no parabens. Persona 3, who's a Gen uh, X, she said, uh, you know, she preferred formulations with a creamy texture because the creamy texture helped to solve for, uh, help to regain her lost skin barrier. So you see how the three personas responded differently when asked with the same question. I'm gonna now hand over to Mikesh for the concluding slides. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Pooja. So let's look at how, it, uh, how this project, this knowledge study which we did, uh, what kind of impact it has caused, caused uh, internally. First of all, we were able to integrate all the three sciences within Laurel RNI which is consumer sciences, sensory sciences, and instrumental sciences. And we were able to do a holistic evaluation. Next, obviously we were able to identify need gaps, which uh, actually gave us uh, cues for future uh, developments. And also uh, the existing product portfolio, we were able to better target and better position them for different consumer sets. And lastly, the Gen AI con consumer personas, which Pooja uh, talked about, these personas, we have developed them right now. We will keep nurturing it and feeding it with more and more data with for future research. And the whole idea is to have AI-driven uh, chatbots or digital partners, which will answer your uh, 
imminent queries or any uh, business question which comes across to you and we should be able to answer them in a much better way, in a much faster way to all our stakeholders internally. Lastly, I would like to thank all the stakeholders uh, of this project, the, the lab stakeholders in RNI, the evaluation intelligence team, the Ipsos global data science and analytics team, sorry, uh, the Ipsos ops team, and the team which worked on it, which was uh, Neha, myself, and Nimisha, and from Ipsos, it was Pooja, Minshu, and Roshan. Uh, the photos which you can see over there, it's a lighter note on, you know, Gen AI created uh, personas of the entire team which worked on this. This is just the teenage version of us. Thank and, you very much. And Mikesh, to add to this, we are now happy by finding our best products. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hi, team. We have a question here. What unique consumer behaviors and cultural factors specific to Indian women were identified through sensory spatial segmentation? And how did these insights influence the product's development? Sure. So like you see, we added a lot of, uh, lot of profiling questions based on the skin concerns, the skin needs for the Indian woman, her life stage, her lifestyle, and all of this. So just like a quick uh, check on this one, there was one profile with sensitive and oily issues. There was one profile who had uh, you know, a combination of oily as well as dry. And then there was a third persona which had extremely dry skin and was looking for something to build back her skin barrier. So she had damaged skin. Do you want to add anything to this? I think uh, you've covered it well. The whole thing is that uh, consumers are, all, are of all types and that's why this kind of study really helps us to create a knowledge base wherein we can uh, you know, target our consumers better, understand them better and the best part is you keep feeding with more and more research data so that your knowledge actually uh, Im keeps improving. You can look at the trends of how things are moving, how consumer preferences have changed over time as well. Thanks. Uh, there's another one. How are these AI powered personas developed? What's the historical data for the algorithm to create these personas? Sure, so I'll take this question, Mikesh. So this uh, AI personas are available on Ipsos uh, proprietary tool called the Ipsos Persona Bot. And here we feed in all the information that we've collected in the research. So in this case, it was all the consumer data, consumer profile, along with the sensorial information of the products which fed into that AI. So it is all research-based data which the tool uses to answer. What do you mean by AI-powered verbatim analysis? How is this different from the traditional verbatim analysis? Sure. So you're, okay, in, on that, that step we uh, captured the audio of the consumer. So it's just not her voice but also her tone. And this gets into uh, our AI where we get AI thematic theme, uh, themes based on the voice analytics as well as the tone analytics and that is superimposed on our consumer quantitative data. Sorry, there are a lot of them. <laughs> okay. Welcome. How are the personas trained with evolving market trends and perceptions? So futuristic, you mean? I think maybe we'll have to do a repeat study and uh, feed that data back to the AI. Yeah, on this one, like I was saying that, you know, uh, this is a journey which has just begun. And the more research you do conduct and the more data you feed into it, the smarter and more wholesome the personality will uh, turn out to be. And like, like I said, you will be able to also understand how the preferences and trends are changing over time as well. So yeah, that's, it's more like one person, you keep teaching that person, and that uh, you keep getting a lot of uh, uh, input and uh, feedback from that uh, digital person for you. The next one, uh, do these personas engage with real consumers to learn and recalibrate their responses? Well, we're not there yet. It's just the first step in the right direction. So these personas are simply designed to handle unlimited questions based on the data that we fed in. Also, I think uh, it, it might be unfair for a client partner who is uh, you know, looking for data from, looking, looking for insights from the project and if uh, the AI starts taking data from the globe 
and that that kind of starts coloring the insights of your project so i think it will be a lot of ob lot objective driven as to what the the client really wants to understand in our case we wanted to understand our data much better so we have you know kind of requested to strictly stay within the limits of what the survey has come out to be like another one how has this exercise helped l'oreal develop pr products that are different from their initial offerings yeah so uh, firstly this this exercise this knowledge study gave us a good understanding of what kind of consumer segments but from a sensory profiling point of view they come across right and because we integrated the sensory sciences and the instrumental sciences with the consumer leg and now going forward we want to uh, use these this information to see if we can extrapolate what kind of consumer behavior you can predict based on sensory analysis and using this maybe we'll be able to cut down on our uh, consumer research cost somewhere but or rather come out with more focused studies rather than going whole hog 